So we've looked a lot of structure here. Let's look at some fish, because of course we all know that there's no way to catch fish in empty water. So first, let's look at bait. Now this particular image has got what I would say is our traditional sonar in it. It's got sonar that's enhanced in a way that's called down imaging. It gives us a very high resolution picture of the images that are right beneath the boat. And over here on the right, we've got the side images that we've been looking at so far. Now if you're in your boat, and you drive along and you see something like that in traditional sonar, you might ask yourself, what is that? It doesn't look like anything. I, I understand. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a bush, right, or some shrubs or something like that. Maybe it's something that is, a, is an artificial fish attractor or something like that. But it's not. 360 imaging shows us instead that what this is is an enormous school of bait. This happens to be shad down in the Mississippi River. As the water starts getting cold, those shad will pull from the shallows into real distinct deep water holes to try to survive and make it through the winter. And this is one of these giant piles of shad in a relatively deep hole in the Mississippi River. Right? Now we all know that the fish we want to catch follow the bait. Right? So while this may be an area that has a lot of bait in it, it's also an area that's going to be rich in the fish that we're trying to catch. Okay, so now shad, for those of you who don't fish the river, you know, can range anywhere from that size to that size or so. But these are probably year lengths. We're looking at a couple inch long fish. So this is what a giant school of two inch long fish looks like. Okay. If you're looking for bait, this is how you might find a giant school. Now here, we don't have giant schools of shad. If we did, our fish would probably be fatter, right? But instead, we've got smaller schools of shiners, small perch, tulabies, things like that. This is what a small school of bait looks like. And I can tell you that over the last couple of nights, my partners that I've been fishing with and I have seen piles and piles and piles of these bait fish. Okay, little small schools of bait that are imaged very easily inside imaging. And again, find the bait and you'll find the fish. Now these, most of these schools of bait are these four and five inch long shiners. That if you drive, if you go to a harbor late at night and shine your flashlight on them, you'll see them. There's clouds of these things around. This is why all of our walleyes this fall are this big around instead of this big around like they were last fall. Okay, but again, identifying fit, identifying bait, and using the presence of bait to help figure out where you want to spend your time fishing is one of the things that side imaging is very, very good at. So side imaging is good at finding bait. Let's look at how it performs in finding fish. So here's an image of a school of walleyes over soft bottom. We are all agree that this is a soft bottom area. It has this dark blue bottom, okay, so it's kind of mucky and marly. And you can see that there's little white returns scattered all around that bottom. Now those white returns, many of them are fish, and some of them are walleyes. And I know that to be the case because we caught them. Okay, so that's a walleye that we caught in that area while we were fishing around those white returns on that soft bottom area. Okay, so this is what walleyes look like when they are close to the bottom. And again, no shadow. Okay? Now, over here, this is going to be really hard to see because it's kind of bright, but we have three distinct fish returns. And to the left of each of them, there is a little dark spot. Those are the shadows that are associated with each of the fish returns. Because we have some distance, between the white return from the fish and the dark spot, we know that these fish are off the bottom. They're not right belly to the bottom, like many of the fish on the left are. They have no shadows associated with them. Another thing we can determine by looking for, looking at the shadow and the fish return itself, is that not all shadows are equally close to their fish return. The higher the fish gets in the water column, the larger the distance between the white spot and the dark spot. Right? So we can use images like this to make informed decisions about how we want to present baits to these fish. Right? If we had a screen full of returns that had the white fish return separated by a large distance from its shadow, probably the last thing we want to do is live bait rig those fish. The fish are all above our baits. Right? Instead, these might be fish that we can cast pranks to, or that we can slip bobber fish and keep our baits up in the water column because all the fish that we're trying to catch are up in the water column as well. So we're not just seeing the fish we're trying to catch, 
We're using the information about those fish to make informed decisions about how we want to present our baits to those fish. That is an incredibly powerful tool, and it's all available to us in the form of side imaging. Now these are walleyes. Let's look at some other fish as well. Over here on the left, we have a school of catfish. And this is from the Mississippi River. This is down by Wabasha. You can see we've got a whole bunch of bright white returns. Those returns have large numbers of sonar shadows. Okay? Catfish are not just bottom cruisers, especially channels. They'll get up in big schools and hunt. Okay? And so we know that many of those fish are channels because my daughter, my nine-year-old daughter over there on the left, caught one. Okay? So it's easy for me to figure out what these fish are. I can't just determine it by looking at the picture. Once we catch a couple, then you start realizing, okay, this is what a school of catfish looks like. This is what a school of sheephead looks like. This is what a bunch of perch swimming around the bottom look like. This is what walleyes on the bottom look like. Okay? As you get more experience with this type, sort of technology, you can make decisions about, okay, I definitely want to stop here because these are crappies. I definitely want to keep on moving because this school of fish that looks all appealing on my sonar is really just sheephead and I can keep on moving on my way. So we have catfish over on the left. We've got more walleyes over here on the right. But these walleyes are really hard to see. And the reason they're really hard to see is because these walleyes are over hard bottom. They okay, soar the catfish over there on the left. It just turns out that those are a little bit easier to see because the bottom's a little softer. Now as we go to hard bottom areas, those fish just don't leap off the screen at us anymore like, this, like the walleyes over soft bottom did in the, in the previous slide. Instead, it becomes more important to look for the shadows. Okay, so now this image I collected right outside of the red door this June. This is a bunch of mixed walleyes and smallmouth bass that we caught while fishing this area. The fish themselves are scattered in this area. They're hard to see unless you're standing up here looking at it. But it's obvious, it should be everybody, obvious to everybody in the room what these dark spots are. Right? These dark spots are fish shadows that are associated with fish that are between, between my boat and the outside range of my side imaging screen. Right? Easily castable. That's all we were doing was casting cranks to catch these fish. Right? So we saw an image like this, stop the boat, start casting, and produce results like that. Make informed decisions about how to fish by seeing the fish themselves. Now this is a 360 image that I collected when I was out perching with my kids. Okay, so in, in, uh, we, and in this particular instance, we just anchored. We're drifting around. We had a spot that we knew was producing. We drove right to it, dropped the anchor, and started fishing. But while we were fishing, we put down that 360 imaging pod so I could see what was going on all around our boat. Okay? And we could quite literally watch the perch that we were trying to catch come and go on this soft bottom mud flat. Okay? Now, the reason I know that these white streaks are perch, or fish anyway, is that between one sweep of the 360 imaging beam and, the, and another, they would move. Okay? They're swim, they don't just sit in one spot. And so while our boat is fixed in one position, the 360 imaging beam is traveling around and around. Between sweeps, we can watch the fish go from here to here, or from here to here. And we get super excited when they would go from here to here, because now we can catch them. They're right beneath the boat. We're just drop shot for them, super easy. Okay, so these are the results. I don't know that all of those returns are perch, but some of them are. But I know that because we're catching them. So I hope you've learned something about what side imaging is all about. If you want to learn more, here are a couple of resources you might find useful. First, on my own website, I have I host uh, I write a bunch of articles and have some short videos about how to use side imaging. On this website, which is easy to remember, learnsideimaging.com, uh, we have larger videos. In fact, we're going to post the video from the from the seminar today there. So if you want to go back and see it again, go to learnsideimaging.com. You'll be able to see it again. We also have an instructional DVD that's for sale. You can come and purchase to learn more about how to use this technology to catch fish. And I'll tell you that. This particular DVD is not like the ones you may have watched in before that are how to use your sonar, right? Shot in somebody's basement in demo mode. This is all on the water. Half of it is filmed out here. So if you want to learn about how to use side imaging to fish Lake Molax, you'll be able to learn a lot of that by picking up the DVD from LearnSideImaging.com. So now it's time to go get them. Okay. 
These are all fish that my buddies and I, my three buddies in the back, raise your hand, Mark, Gene, and Brett, we've been up since Thursday. We've been fishing. Okay, we've been fishing walleyes during the day. We've been fishing crappie, or we have walleyes at night. We've been fishing crappies on a nearby lake during the day. I can tell you that many of the fish that we have, that we've ended up, ended up catching, we've identified by side imaging, oh, there's a couple fish, we better pay attention, and somebody's rod goes off. And particularly the crappies that we've been catching have been suckers for this. All we have to do is drive around in deep water, we start seeing fish in side imaging, and we stop, and we fish, and we catch fish. It's a piece of cake, okay? This is technology that you can use, that's easily accessible to you, that you can use to make your trips more successful. Okay, now, it's still my guts time. So who's been fishing the last couple of days? Who's going fishing tonight? More people. I'll tell you exactly what we've been doing. The first night we were up, this would have been Thursday night, we caught almost all of our fish on outside weed edges, and we caught a, some fish in shallow rocks, three, four feet of water. You're constantly ticking the bottom. You're two rod lengths offshore, but the fish were in there thick. Okay? Last night, we had no rock fish. It was maddening, because I thought I had it, finally had it figured out. Instead, all of our fish were in the weeds, not on the inside edge, not on the outside edge, but in the thick stuff. Okay, so keep those things in mind as you go out and fish tonight. Um, for baits, minnow profiles. In my opinion, the days of the shad wrap are over, at least in terms of this year. Okay? We've been catching everything on minnow-shaped days. So scatter wrap minnows, husky jerks, thunder sticks, things like that. Natural colors. Lots of perch and lots of perch uh, caught, fi uh, caught fish in my boat. We caught some on Fire Tiger. We caught some on metallic baits last night when the moon came out. If you're out last night about 10, 30, or 11, the skies parted. We had nice moonlight for a little while, and then the metallic pattern showing really well. Uh, for speeds, 1.8. One 1.6 one to 1.8 one is what we've been pulling for speeds. Don't go faster than 2. That's ridiculous. The water's 52 degrees. Okay, slow down. Last thing I want to tell you about fishing right now is that between Thursday and Friday, of course, this is no big surprise. The number of boats went way up. Okay, tonight, there are a lot of boats out fishing right now. There'll be a lot of guys out fishing tonight. Be careful. Now, I've been fishing up here for almost 10 years at night, and last night was the first time I saw a collision between two boats. And it was about, we were about 100, 120 feet from, the, from this collision that happened. We were, we were netting a fish, and, uh, and a boat came into the area where we were fishing. It was trying to give us some room. He was going outside of us. He saw we were busy. We had all our headlamps on them shining light all over the place. But he was paying more attention to us, and he didn't see the guy that was trailing me, who was also bumping out to give us some room to land the fish. And they ate T-bone. Right. Now everybody was fine, we checked on them, they had both, every, everybody's boat still worked, and nobody got knocked in the water or hurt. Okay, but these accidents happen. So when you're out, and I tell my guys, whoever I'm fishing with at night, everybody's job is to have head on the swivel all the time. Right? You see a light that seems out of place, it's either a stern light or a graph. Slow down. No reason to hurry. Okay? Don't put your boat on plane and drive for 45 minutes at top speed. Okay? Go slow. The fish are going to be there. Now we fished all, we fished uh, the first night until 3 a.m. Last night we quit at 1.30. There was no one particular period when we had fishing. Or where we had good fishing versus poor fishing. Okay? So the fish are going to be there all night. Give them a chance, give yourself a chance to catch them by being careful when you're out there today. Okay? So thanks to Mike for inviting me. I appreciate all of your attention. Let's stick around for a little while. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you.